Laura and Laura Wan are terms that you might have heard thrown around the Internet of Things space, but might be something you don't quite understand yet or haven't had the chance to use. If that's the case, then you are in the right place. In this video, we are going to cover the basics of what Laura and Laura Wan are and how to use it in your projects, including how to set up a gateway and use the Things network. Welcome to a Learn Embedded Systems tutorial, which today is sponsored by MoveX and their Ciceroni board, an STM32 WL powered board with LoRaWAN connectivity in the Arduino MKR form factor. It features GPS connectivity through the onboard UBlox chip and onboard LiPo charging. We'll have a closer look at this board later, and we make some interesting projects with the Ciceroni board in our next video in this series. This video is going to cover what LoRa and LoRaWAN are, why you and when you would want to use LoRaWAN in your projects, and finally we're going to give you a demonstration on how to set up a gateway, how to set up a sensor node, and how to communicate with the Things network. Let's get started. Firstly, LoRa and LoRaWAN are not the same thing. LoRa is a physical layer in the OSI network model. In this case, the physical layer is radio frequency or RF signals. I'm going to try to not get too RF theory heavy here, but there'll be a little bit sprinkled in. LoRa is one of many ways to get data over radio waves from a transmitter to a receiver somewhere else. LoRa is short for long range, so you can imagine those devices being quite, uh, quite far apart. In fact, it's claimed that LoRa transmissions can travel up to 15 kilometers in open rural spaces and up to about five kilometers in more dense urban areas. The further away these devices are, the weaker the signal is when it reaches the receiver. This is due to the inverse square law where the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation is equal to the inverse of the distance between the two points squared. This may also be referred to as the free space path loss. There are some ways to combat this. You can't change the loss, but you can make the transmission more powerful by adding an antenna with a better directivity and or increasing the gain. This can also be done on both sides of the link if required. Another thing you can do is decrease the frequency of the signal you are transmitting, as this reduces the free space path loss, but this also decreases the bandwidth of the signal and comes at the price of lower data rates. LoRa is designed for low bitrate, low power, and long range applications such as Internet of Things, remote sensing, and so on. The low power aspect of LoRa not only helps with battery powered devices or applications, as the transmitter isn't using much power when actually sending the data, but it also helps these devices operate without a license. And I'll cover that um, in a moment. To get data onto an RF signal, a process called modulation is used. You've probably heard of AM or amplitude modulation, where the signal increases and decreases in amplitude to denote a message. This is typically audio or data. LoRa is a proprietary form of frequency modulation which was developed by a company that Semtech now owns. It uses chirp spread spectrum modulation, a bit of a mouthful, which is a form of frequency modulation where a series of ones and zeros are represented by different chirps. A chirp is a signal whose frequency increases with respect to time, that's in the case of an up chirp, or frequency that decreases with respect to time in the case of a down chirp. If you're interested in more of the technical depths of LoRa modulation, then I would highly recommend that you take a look at this video from Visual Electric when you're finished with this one. When you are getting started with LoRa, you're probably going to hear a little bit about spreading factors. A change in spreading factor changes the rate at which the frequency changes. This is also called the sweep rate. All you really need to know is that the higher the spreading factor, the lower the sweep rate, which means the chirps take longer, and hence sending a message also takes longer. This comes at the advantage of greatly increased range, but does sacrifice data rate. On the other hand, lower spreading factors allow for faster transmissions, but much lower ranges. LoRa typically operates within license exempt bands. These bands vary between regions and here in the UK, we are able to use the 434 and 868 MHz bands at certain power levels without a license. It is important to check in your country or region which bands are currently allowed under a license exempt framework. Now that we have covered how the physical layer of LoRa works, we're going to have a look at LoRaWAN. 
LoRaWAN is a wide area network protocol that is built on top of the LoRa modulation that we've just described. Together, LoRa and LoRaWAN form a low power wide area network or LPWAN. A typical LoRaWAN architecture is arranged in a star topology and consists of end devices, gateways, network servers, application servers, and finally, an end user application server. In some configurations, there may also be a join server. Let's start with end devices or nodes. These are most likely to be sensors in the field. These are the things that are gonna gather the data and send it back to your application. For example, we have this Ciceroni board, which could be collecting environmental data from this Arduino environmental sensing board. These end devices transmit blindly to any gateway that can hear them. Gateways collect the messages from the end devices and forward these to the LoRa network server. They're essentially packet forwarders. Network servers, unsurprisingly, manage the network. They perform tasks like deduplication of messages in the case where more than one gateway receives a message from an end node, and then they forward the traffic to the correct application servers. Application servers are responsible for handling and interpreting the data from the end device and to connect with the end user application. In the case where there is a join server, this handles the over-the-air activation process for end devices to be added to the network. As a note on network security, the LoRaWAN protocol enforces the use of AES 128-bit encryption on the payload data that's sent through the network. There are multiple LoRaWAN networks out there, You've probably heard of the Things Network. That's what we're going to be using today. This is also uh, abbreviated to TTN. It is possible to self-host your own LoRaWAN network through something like ChirpStack. And we are going to have a video on that coming soon, covering how to set up your own LoRaWAN private network. So now that you know how LoRa and LoRaWAN work, you've probably got a few ideas about how you would want to use it. But I'm quickly going to summarize when and when not to use it. If you're using small devices in your own home that aren't really battery constrained, then you're probably better off simply using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. However, as soon as your projects reach beyond your home, maybe into your garden, maybe even further down the street, into somewhere quite far away, and especially if they become heavily battery constrained, then it would be a good idea to consider using LoRa and LoRaWAN. Now, I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to set up an end device and a gateway on the Things network and send data from that end device to our network. As our end device, I'm going to be using the Ciceroni board from our sponsor, MoveX. We're also going to be using the Things Indoor Gateway, which does look a little bit like a plug-in air freshener, and it's available for around £80. Um, this is quite a budget gateway based on the Semtec SX1308 chipset, and it connects to your Wi-Fi network via an ESP network chip. You might not need a gateway if there is already one within range, and you can check for one on the Things network map. Just a quick warning about so-called single channel gateways, like this SparkFone board, which is available for about £40 here in the UK. Um, you might see these advertised as beginner chips. Uh, these are not really gateways as such. They are not LoRaWAN compliant, because a LoRaWAN gateway needs at least eight channels and they're not supported by things like um, the Things Network, and you're likely to have more problems than the discount is worth. It is completely possible to create your own DIY gateway, and these are often in the form of Pi Hats, such as this uh, Rack 2245 based board, but right now these are hard to find available, and even harder to find at reasonable prices. So we're planning on making a video about creating your own gateway when availability improves. To set up the indoor gateway, we need to power it up and connect it to our Wi-Fi network. You can do this by holding the reset button on the bottom for 5 seconds, then holding the setup button on the top for 10 seconds. This will then create an access point, and you can join it using the password that's on the back of the device. We can then open a browser and navigate to 192.168.4.1. Connect to your own Wi-Fi router and hit save and reboot. Now to get this gateway connected to the Things Network, we need an account. If you don't have one, you can create an individual Community Edition account, which is free, but your usage is subject to fair use limits. Select the region that best describes where you are, then create and log into your account. 
and open the console. Go to Gateways, then enter your Gateway EUI, which you can find on the back of the Gateway. Enter FFFE after the first six digits to make sure it's the correct length. Enter the claim ID, which is the Wi-Fi password of the gateway. I'm obviously blurring these details out here so that no one nicks mine. Create an ID for your gateway, and then the frequency plan, and in my case, that's the recommended Europe setting. Press claim, gateway. After a little wait, the light on the top of the gateway will be solid green, and you'll get a notification saying connect gateway in the live data section. And that is the gateway ready to use. Now to set up our end device. I have an 868 MHz antenna plugged into the Ciceroni board, and the firmware on the board allows us to send 80 commands over a serial connection from our computer to the STM32 chip on the board. And these 80 commands are basically just instructions to the radio module on board. There is an explainer document of available 80 commands and explanations on MoveX's website. So, in order to add our end device to our network, we first need to create an application. Navigate to the Applications page, then hit Create Application. Give your application a name. You can also give it a description and a title if you want. Then we need to register an end device. I'm going to do this manually. Select the same frequency plan as you did earlier for the gateway, and the LoRaWAN version the board uses. This should be on the data sheets of whatever chip you're using. Enter the device EUI if your device has one. If not, generate one and make sure you note it down. Don't forget to add the colons after every two digits. Fill the app EUI box with all zeros. This is sometimes called the join EUI. And then finally generate an app key and note that down. You can give the end device a helpful name if you want and then register it. Okay, so now we're going to configure the board. I'm going to open up a PuTTY terminal and connect to the COM port that the Ciceroni board is using. Then I can check I'm connected using the AT question mark command. And you see all of the possible AT commands listed here. So the board is answering our commands. First job is to set the same keys that we just generated using the AT plus DEUI, app EUI, app key, and network key commands. The app key and network key are the same. With that done, we can try and activate the end node using over the air activation or OTAA using the AT plus join equals one command. And we should see back on our TTN console that the end device has joined the network. This is good so far. Now we're going to send a message to the network. I'm using the CFG send command just to set some basic parameters. And then I'm going to send a string of 6865, 6C, 6C and 6F. After hitting enter, we can see that this has been received by the Things Network, and we can see this message here. Turning that back into plain text, you can see our hello message. Once the data is in the Things Network, you can export it into an end user application and do whatever you want with it. But we're going to cover that in our next video in this series. Hopefully this video has taught you a bit more about LoRa and LoRaWAN and how you could use it in your next projects. Please make sure you are subscribed to stay tuned for our next video where we showcase the power of the Ciceroni board by creating a mobile asset tracker, making use of the LoRa communication and GPS capabilities of the board, as well as a solar powered remote weather monitoring station. You don't want to miss this one. Thank you very much to MoveX for sponsoring this video. Please do check out the Ciceroni boards using the links in the video description if you're interested. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a nice day, and see you in the next one.